in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed desire to see your glory, your kingdom, your majesty. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will do something remarkable in our lives. Do something mighty, oh God. Do something great. Do something amazing. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed. Please play strings, strings, strings. Sing majesty. Yeah. Majesty. Sing majesty. Changed. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. In the presence of your majesty. Just the voices. Sing majesty. Yeah. Majesty. Sing majesty. Your grace has found me just as I am. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands. Empty, Empty handed but alive in your hands. Sing majesty. Yeah. Majesty. Sing majesty. majesty, majesty, forever we are changed, forever we are changed by your love, we're in the presence. ahead and begin to pray in the spirit just connect sing in the spirit Sina Maria Nana Mosunia Sina Mosopania Nana Mosunia Mana Nana Mana Nana Sena 
amidst the praises of his people. Spirit, we welcome you. You are always welcome. This is your place. This is your house. We are your people. I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name. worship. Lord, I Father, come, son. Come on, lift your hands and worship Him from the depth of your heart. Holy One, help me worship Him. time with your hands lifted up and from the depths of your heart
Lord is healing a chest condition right now. There is, there is a chest condition that the Lord is healing right now. I rebuke that sickness. I rebuke that devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I rebuke that devil right now. Right now. The Lord is healing a lady of asthma. You begin to cough right now. Asthma. Asthma is being healed. That devil of darkness. I curse that spirit right now. The Lord is healing asthma. Asthma. Asthma is being healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing another lady. Your hair falls out of your hair. It's been a very serious thing. Sometimes it looks like you deliberately removed it. This is a demonic attack. The Lord is healing that lady right now. 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 Someone is being healed of a blood condition. I don't know what it is. But the power of God is going to come upon you right now. Right now, that blood condition. I curse that blood condition. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I curse that blood condition. There's someone outside. The Lord is healing you of migraine headache. Severe migraine headache. Severe migraine headache. Especially in the night before you sleep, it begins to affect you. The Lord is healing that migraine headache right now. The Lord is healing that migraine headache right now. Hallelujah. I'm hearing the name Ruth. I'm hearing the name Ruth. God is bringing breakthrough to the family of a lady called Ruth. Ruth, Ruth. Because I'm seeing the angel of the Lord. And he's saying they are bringing miracles to the family of Ruth. The family of Ruth. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Listen, let me tell you something. This is the kind of ground where everything is possible. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that cometh unto God must believe that He exists, and then He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Hallelujah. The rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Please lift up your hands. There are 11 people that I see in the Spirit. Lift your hands inside and outside. The power of God is going to come upon 11 people. 11 people that I see and God is breaking afflictions in families 11 people at the count of 3 the power of God will move inside and outside there are some of you who are outside right now 11 people Lord let your power touch those people right now 11 of them I see in the spirit there's one person i see someone at the outside outside at the overflow the power of god is coming upon that one person no other name like the name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name of the Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus. His word. He's worthy of honor. Sing it from the depths of your heart. There's no other name like the name of Jesus. There's no other name like the name.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Visit us tonight, O oh God. Do what only you can do. Let your people know that you are in the midst of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I welcome everyone tonight. We apologize for those of us outside. I want you to know that no matter how far you are, the Lord will touch you this night. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not come to seek an idol. You have come to seek the living God. Hallelujah. One of the things that the Lord has been doing and will keep doing in this place is revealing to us the mysteries of the kingdom. Everyone say the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord declared that this is a year of light and dominion. Dominion that comes through light, not guesswork. Dominion that comes through understanding. Psalm 82 from verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. And so they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. He said, but have I not said ye are gods? Are you following me now? And all of you are children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. The advantage you have in the kingdom, listen to me. The advantage you have in the kingdom it's not just that you have declared the lordship of Christ over your life, but you have come to a point where you have spiritual understanding. You understand how this system functions. And then the things that used to be a mystery are no longer a mystery to you because you know that there is an operation that governs them. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, what you know in the kingdom stays with you. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? When you know it, he said they are life to those who find them. That means they sought for it. They are life to do, not to everybody. They are not life to every Christian. They are life to those who find them. And so as God opens our eyes to see these things in the spirit, we must, we must be passionate about making them part of our lives. The question is, how many of us are really willing to apply the things we are hearing? It's, it's, you see, the, 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 the issue with the body of Christ may not necessarily be lack of revelation, but our inability to take the word of God. And make it become part of our life in truth. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Feel this damn with your spirit Ephesians chapter 3 Thank you Lord Jesus Again we welcome those of us who have come from far May the Lord bless you Your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus Verse 9. Ephesians chapter 3. From verse 9. By the way, let me, let me appreciate as many of us who were able to embark on the fast. I know that some of us didn't fast. 
Praise the Lord. But for as many of us who opened up ourselves, the Bible says, He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting. It says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Men can be mocked, but God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. Hallelujah. Whatsoever a man sows, that man will reap. We are sowing to the spirit and we understand that there is a reward. Say there is a reward. Say it one more time, there is a reward. Brothers and sisters, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are certain things that are rewards. If everything in the kingdom is a gift, what then is the reward of obedience? Hallelujah. He says, there remained a rest for the people of God. Although they are the people of God, there still remained a rest. He says, let us labor to enter that rest. For he that has entered that rest has ceased from his works. Hallelujah. So I want to really salute every one of us. I know for many of us, doing a dry fast like that may not be very, your body, because you are living in the body, may not be easy. But you see, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Hallelujah. It doesn't kill. Don't let any man fool you. It does not kill. It does something to you in the spirit that until you are spiritually minded, you may never understand. You see, I keep saying it. If I ask this sister to stand, stand where you are, without telling her the reason why she should stand, huh? and the benefit, whatever she will gain for standing, she will be wary. Are you getting my point? And there's every tendency that she will compromise. But if I tell her, stand here because somebody is about to pass, let him locate you and bless you. Even when she's tired, there is a higher revelation that is beyond the pain of her body and it keeps her. This is the revelation that makes men spiritual. So although your body is weak, Paul says, so then death works in us that life may work in you. Physically speaking, your body is weak. You see everything and you want to take it. Even if it is, even if it is Vicks Lemon Plus or what. You just want to take anything that can help you. The clearest proof of obedience is when you have the opportunity to disobey. That's when your obedience is perfected. If I rob you of an opportunity to obey, and I don't give you an option. You are not really obedient. That's why there was another tree in the garden of Eden. So that the will of man could freely choose. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you. May God bless us. We will reap the benefit for sure. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me also use this opportunity to salute all of the workers. I was just thinking about... The workforce we have in this ministry believe me you may not understand the enormous responsibility that working in this ministry entails you must love God to be a faithful worker they are bounded by love and um, I can only imagine trying to do all of the things they are doing while praying and fasting complete dry fast the Lord will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. My Bible tells me that God is no man's debtor. He will reward you your labor of love. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Out of the ashes of my dying today I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. 
I see the breaking of a brand new day. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3. That's where we are. Verse 9. It's projected so we can just look to save time. And to make all men see what is the what? Of what? It says the fellowship of the mystery. To make men see what is the fellowship. The resultant effect of our partaking in the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom. Which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God. Who created all things by Jesus Christ. Verse 10. To the intent. That means this is why he is now revealing to us the mystery. That now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the multifaceted wisdom of God. That means that the wisdom of God is shrouded in mysteries. And every time God wants to display new dimensions of himself, he opens people, he grants them access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me. All of me, Lord. I give all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. Brothers and sisters, we reign in this kingdom on the strength of our knowledge of the mysteries. Hallelujah. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is not about claiming, I take it. No. Dominion is the resultant effect of the spiritual understanding of this system. The laws that have been put in operation. Hallelujah. And how to be able to work with these laws. To ensure that the kingdom of God comes across a territory. So dominion has nothing to do with just trying to claim. It's not about jacking yourself and trying to believe. When Jesus walked upon the earth. Every time he looked at things. He interpreted them on the strength of his knowledge about the mysteries of the kingdom. When he saw the winds and the waves. He didn't join the other people to say I think we are in rainy season. He looked well and he said no this is demonic. Are you getting what I am saying now? All through the Bible. All those who were able to, by reason of some spiritual means, have access to the mysteries of the kingdom, they were the ones who reigned in their generation. Isaac understood something about spiritual laws. And when men were running away for famine, he sowed in that land. And he reaped a hundredfold. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Philistines envied him. He increased, he worked strong, he made progress. Moses had an encounter and there was something that Moses knew. He knew that his rod was the rod of God and that that rod could do mighty things. Brothers and sisters, 
those who will be featured in this end time move of God are not just men who say God use me they are men who will have to understand the ancient keys that kept the heavens and the earth closed and that opened them at will if you do not understand this key you will die like a mama the world is becoming spiritual every day I hope you realize it used to be physical when giants and great men will threaten others then it now became intellectual hallelujah so your dominion is on the strength of your knowledge of intellect and and having knowledge of your biological environment and so on and so forth but before christ comes it is they that know their god they that know is the same word know like a man knowing a woman they that have come into practical intimacy that has proofs they that know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits i don't want to live my life guessing hoping i'm right hoping that the laws of the spirit that have been operated are the correct ones only to find out that it's not like that the bible says awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light he said walk circumspectly as wise not as unwise in the days that will come hear me those that do not understand the mysteries of the kingdom will die like men mm. but they looked at paul and barnabas and they said the gods have come to us they call them the greek gods zeus and hermes because Okay. oh my god look at the bible says how that um peter now right a snake beat his hand a viper and he just shook it and they said this is not an ordinary human being imagine imagine if all moses had to bring the people out of egypt was a desire to stop seeing people suffering you know he would have died right there right there in the palace that's what a lot of people are carrying they have zeal lord i want to save my family with zeal zeal without knowledge will end you in disaster because you will enter territories where you do not understand the codes of operation and your zeal will frustrate you it will make it look like jesus did not die There are many people who have sustained casualties. Some people went to their villages out of zeal. And they set altars on fire. They set shrines on fire. Before it finished burning, half of them were para was paralyzed from top to bottom. Like the temple, the curtain that tore when Jesus died. Half of them from top to bottom. Left hand side or right hand side. What do you know that sponsors your audacity to confront evil? What secret have you found? Those of us in ministry, what have you found that assures you that ministry will last? Hmm. He says, I found your word and I did eat them. And it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. What have you found? What have you found that gives you confidence? in this wicked society that we live in what have you found brothers and sisters in luke chapter 4 reading from verse 15 downwards the bible says jesus found he found it where it was written about him the prophecy of isaiah and he said this day is this scripture fulfilled what have you found that gives you a guarantee that you will be married by now you know being beautiful is not enough. What have you found? What is your spiritual advantage? When all else fail, what do you stand on? Job. 
is one man I have come to respect and love. When you study the book of Job, this was a man who had all kinds of catastrophe in his life. Do you know what it means for a man to be the richest man in the East? The East has always been associated with wealth. Right? Wise men came from the East. Job was such a, he said, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle, the young men saw me and bowed their heads. The old men saw me and they stood up. What kind of influence did Job command? And then all of a sudden, in one day, everyone say one day. Say it one day. It was not one prophetic day. It was one literal day. They came to Job and said, Job, your children, they are all dead. Your cattle, your house, everything. And all that Job was left with was his wife and his health. When everything disappeared, Job checked around, what mystery do I know that can help me now? And Job said, he blessed the name of the Lord and said, naked I came and naked I will return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How can a man speak like that? Do you not know that there must be something you know that makes you to give kings like that? Your children, your cattle, everything. Job did not know. That there is a possibility of knowing what can happen in the spirit. I hope you know that the meeting that happened in the spirit was an advantage that was given to us by the person who wrote that book. Those in the earth realm did not know that something transpired like that. Little did they know that the sons of God came and Satan was part of them. And he said, Satan, where are you coming from? That means Satan does not stay in one place. And that means Satan is not omnipresent. Are you seeing that now? And Satan said, from my voyage around this territory. And he said, while you went around to families and territories, did you come across a man called Job? Satan said, I know him. I've seen him. I've seen him. I destroyed other families, jeopardized other people. But when I came to Job, I saw a level of fortification that frustrated me. Come on now. This is a conversation happening in the heavenlies. Whereas Job was minding his business here in the earth realm. Imagine what is being said about you in the spirit. And you are here just walking around. Naive and you become a victim of the result of meetings where you did not participate in. I refuse it. I refuse it. The Bible says they know not, neither do they understand. Men discuss things in the spirit and humans in the earth realm receive the result of the meetings. And someone gets up in the morning and returns back with one leg. That is the result of a meeting that was carried out. You were not there but you were the victim of it. Don't let anyone fool you. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Someone gets up in the morning Blesses the name of the Lord, dresses well, and you carry your, your fire to the office only to return in the evening with a sack letter. Can I tell you something? When you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, you will know that nothing just happens in the earth realm. Jesus gave us a picture, He said, Let it be done in the earth as it is. That means the earth is always a reflection of something that happens already in the heavens. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you learning something? My passion is to help you see from a spiritual lens. To give you a new vista so that you do not join men. You don't call what they call conspiracy, conspiracy. You can step home on the strength of a higher spiritual advantage. And you know what law to engage. This is what makes you more than a conqueror.
Hallelujah. That means if Job had cursed God, he would have activated a law that would have killed him. Are you getting that? Because his wife gave us a revelation. She knew that that law existed. She said, Job, I'm your wife, but I'm tired. Do you want to die fast? Curse God. This is another revelation on its own. I don't know how you read your Bible, but I have positioned myself to see light in everything in the world. I don't read my Bible to have sermons or to crime scriptures. They are life to me. There are certain things that have intrigued me about the book of Job. One of it is the ability, hear me, the ability to invoke God and then God comes down. How did Job do it? Did he use a magic formula? Is it not in your Bible? Job summoned God and the king of kings and the lord of lords showed up. Right now we use all kinds of instruments and waste time for days. We say we are trying let's call down the presence of God. Job, a man in his pain said, Lord, I demand a meeting with you. Brothers and sisters, what you know can make you look like a God upon the surface of the earth. Hmm. Who is God speaking to tonight? It's time to rise up. There is a new status. There is, there is, there is an enlargement in the spirit. God wants to give you capacity to reign experientially. Oh, I sense the presence of God, strong and mighty in this place. And Job refused. And then another meeting was held in heaven. And Satan said, I, I have an explanation as to why Job didn't curse you. Because he's still healthy. He said, every man can give thanks. It's not unusual. That means as I went around the earth, I saw those I afflicted, but I left their health and they still gave thanks. He said, touch his body. God said, really? All right. Go ahead and touch his body. A man was minding his business and a ball that came out. Are you seeing that? Those boils. Hold on. Those boils, where did they come from? They were direct. It was based on an instruction. Like a text message you send and it will go to the person you sent it to. Job just found out that boils and blisters were coming out of his body. And his wife said, this is it. I've tried for you. We have, after all, we've had plenty of children. So if it's faithfulness, I have proven that I'm faithful. It's time to go curse God and die. She wasn't sick. She did not know that it was not because she was standing strong. But she was not part of the meeting. The, the discussion was not about her. There are so many people who have not received any attack from darkness. They think it's because their spiritual life is strong. The day your file is open, you will see how weak you are. They laugh at others. Hold on. I'm very serious tonight. They are lazy. They don't pray. They don't fast. They say, I'm not praying. I'm not fasting. I'm not doing anything. But the devil would dare not touch me. Hold on. In the book of Job, there was a discussion. Nothing happened to the wife of Job. She didn't become barren. She, she was standing close to a man with a disease that could contact her, but nothing happened. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? And then, when Job's body was sore, dogs came to lick his body. The Bible tells us, that there were certain people that came from different territories of greatness. And they sat down for seven days. They were using the wisdom that made them great. To analyze what, what law would have been violated. To make God judge a man like that. And for seven days they were brainstorming. After seven days they looked and said, Kai Job, you sinned. We, we have checked everything. You sinned. Job said, don't talk like that about me. God will curse you. Better keep, if you don't know what to say, and Elihu reserved himself. Elihu was still checking. He said, ah, ah, the law of creation, the mystery of longevity. What law did Job break? This way, other people were just moving around. Ah, Job, sorry. 
But others said, no, let's check these laws. See, brothers and sisters, there is light that makes you different. Other people looked at the heavens and said, why is today bright? The wise men said, no way. Something is happening in the earth realm. Something is happening somewhere. And they started tracing it. Other people were saying, please, so let's dry the clothes very fast. Whereas salvation had come. In Herod's palace, the spirit of the Antichrist communicated quickly. He said, another king has been born. Herod, do something about it quickly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. When Jezebel, I told you that Jezebel is a system, isn't it? That's the she goddess, the system, the Antichrist system. Jezebel was married to Ahab. The spirit came into her. Why? Because Ahab represented governance. And she knew it was a mountain that held relevance. So she occupied there and she was practically the one ruling. Are you getting my point? And Jezebel swore when she heard that they destroyed the prophets of Baal. She said, Elijah, I must remove your head. Elijah went up to heaven. Now the spirit of Elijah came in John the Baptist. Jezebel re-entered Herodias again. Are you seeing? And that head of John the Baptist, she's got it. That was why when they birthday down, she said, no, there is a score. He knows. <laughs> there is such ignorance in the earth, man. We walk around. It's not our fault. It's the fault of all of the pastors, apostles, prophets, all of us that claim that we are men of God because we are stewards, the Bible tells us, of the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. When God calls you, can you have it amplified? Is it possible? Yes. Please, if you are in ministry, don't be in a hurry to rush or go on air. Are you getting my point now? Many of us are in a hurry. I want to go for a radio program and say what? Make sure you have something to say. He says, so then, let us apostles be looked upon as ministering servants of Christ. And what? Trustees of the mysteries, the secret purposes of God. That means when God calls you, your call tilts you in a position in the spirit where you have an advantage of access to the mysteries of the kingdom. And if God blesses you with a congregation and you are wasting their time, telling them a lot of junk and jargons, the Bible says you are not a steward. And I refuse to allow you to be ignorant. You will be empowered with light. So when men are running like the nation of Israel, away from Goliath, you will run to Goliath like David. David knew something bigger than a little stone. David knew something. He, had, he understood something. There is something you must know that can make you bold. That a man will look at you and say, do you know I can sack you from this walk? <laughs> You don't just do this foolish Pentecostal laugh. We laugh and they still sack you. You are laughing without revelation. We do stupid things in the body of Christ. Ah, God forbid you will not sack me. The next day, you are collecting the letter and you are going out. And you come and meet the pastor that taught you whatever he taught you. And he says, what happened? You mean they sacked you? It's an embarrassment to redemption. Well, it has happened. But Elijah was a man of like passion like us. The Bible says, and he prayed earnestly that there may not be rain. How can one man didn't consult with the geographers, didn't consult with anybody, did not even use a public address system. He just said, on the strength of what I know, I understand that this territory has been given unto me as an ambassador. And I speak higher. This will come when men will speak. We will speak when we have something to say. Not just to make noise. 
men will come look let me tell you something times will come when the church will determine the events in africa and determine the the events across this nation is not to get money from politicians because you see the shunammite woman was a very wealthy woman and when the prophet came he said what should i do to you he said should i talk to the governor that means elisha was not a small man he could summon the governor say you know what happened for you to sit down there are you ready to listen or you are ready to follow those who are disobedient just like you having the readiness to judge all disobedience when our own obedience is complete hallelujah one of our one of our workers was sharing with me this afternoon a very touching testimony he went on it he's still on it brothers and sisters as an it student first and foremost there were two places that were paying him some very interesting amounts when he told me i was very surprised that's the first miracle second miracle is that when he went there the owner of the company where he was he was doing his it said he wanted his son to be the manager of the place and since the son is not available he should come and be managing the place you want a job the question is what do you know how do men get jobs what have you been taught that brings a job application submit your cv wait is that true could it be that what you know is not the truth that a thing has existed for a long time does not mean it is the truth listen we need to begin to probe the foundation the things that make up our ideologies start asking questions don't just absorb anything like that start asking questions why must that growth disappear and appear it is in your body but it is not within your control is violating a law already it tells you that is demonic how can some because everything in your body should grow at the same rate now this growth is not growing at the same rate so which life is sponsoring it you did biology something else must be sponsoring that supernatural growth it took you 20 years to look the way you are it takes three days for a boil to come out like that but when you are not interested in probing it and it does not cause you to go to the secret place and say lord what mean at these things i'm tired of allowing things to just pass hallelujah are you receiving something i refuse to live my life based on guesswork it's a terrible way to live brothers and sisters i have a question for you what is the guarantee that you are going to celebrate christmas this year look at me what is the guarantee is there is there a spiritual principle that can give you some kind of assurance or do we just walk and whatever will be will be i know this is challenging and i don't mean to hurt anyone maybe of the demise of your loved ones but i'm i'm encouraging you what is the guarantee that you're not going to celebrate see let me tell you many of us have not confronted these issues We've, we've forgotten about it and we've run away. When you run away from a thing, you have not defeated it. When you stand and face it and triumph over it. Hallelujah. Man of God, what gives you assurance that your ministry will keep growing from glory to glory? See, people have been saying they like me. Hey, people, you, you better, you better find an authentic revelation because one moment they said crucify him i mean they said he gave us bread we will force him to be king the next moment they said crucify him can my life 
be so in order. Huh? When you pray for the sick, what gives you guarantee that they will be healed? Your pastor told you, lay hands on the sick, they will be healed. You saw him lay hands and they were healed. You say, me too, I will do it. Is that it? Or hands were laid on me and they say you will now have the healing anointing. Is that it? I'm probing our convictions. And you will find out that many of us are not standing on the rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. What happens to you when they suddenly look at you? And listen, some of us come from territories where witchcraft is very open. What happens? When you go maybe to your village or somewhere, for God's sake, please listen to me. And somebody looks at you and says, Pastor Femi, you will not get married. This is an agreement we have had. What do you do? And I say, I will show them. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Let's not be childish this night. What will you do? What revelation, what key will be ignited? If someone, if I meet you now, Jimmy, and I say, you attend Koinonia. You say, yes, I even heard you sing. And I said, sorry. I've been going to a native doctor all my life. Please, here's the charm he gave me. Help me and break it. Take. What are you going to tell him? Book for counseling? Don't just laugh. I hope you get what I'm telling you. We are the light of the world. We are a city that is set on a hill. Break, help me, destroy this charm. I'm tired of it. And you hear that the last person who really held it died. That's when everybody says, you know, the way this world is, wisdom is profitable to direct. All these kinds of scriptures that emerge out of fear. All right, look up. What gives you confidence huh? that they are not plotting an evil plot to kill you this night? Is it impossible? I'm, see, I'm not making you afraid. I'm teaching you how to be victorious. Many of us think by running away from this, say, don't think about these things. I refuse to think about I know that the Bible says set your mind on things above. But Jesus is, he, is it not your Bible where death is said, Oh, death, I'm talking to you. Where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victim? If you cannot confront, see, eternal life is not life after death, eternal life is authority and victory over death. There are many things we cannot confront in the body of Christ. As I'm talking now, some of you are saying, please, so allow me to get home safely first before you say all of this. What revelation did Jesus have that made him sleep when the boat was physically almost capsizing? How do you know whether your roommate has Ebola or not? Is it not till doctors say the person has it? How do you know? How do you know? Maybe since last year you have been passing those who had it. Look at this. A madman eats from the trash can. They teach us that it is not healthy. Abi, answer me. Is it not true? You spent how many years studying that reality? They thought if you eat, there are all kinds of microorganisms. A madman comes to sit down, turns the dustbin upside down. And he helps himself all through that night. And gets up, cleans his body. And moves while cold you are in your room you are lying down and the cold you have to add jacket and blanket the madman is talking to himself and just strolling on barefoot rain is just beating him and he's looking up and laughing and you're saying oh boy this poor man and the man is laughing back at you correct and after three months that guy is still healthy and strong 
They say that there's crisis everywhere. They are running. The guy is moving around and talking nonsense. And the crisis will finish. The guy is still moving around. Question, who is really mad? This guy, because there is no hope of getting sick. There's no hope of even treating him. You will see him enjoy himself. He will leave the wound there. Flies disturbing it. You will leave it there. The wound will heal by itself. No, no nothing. Could it be that there is something we have learned that has given the devil advantage over us? Could it be that there is something we have been taught that if we did not know it, we would not be this fearful. Technology has increased our fear because it has opened us to the possibilities that exist in this realm. You watch a movie and all of a sudden you just realize that cabbage can kill. You never knew. You ate cabbage, you stole it, you went to people's farm, you looted their products, nothing happened. Now you watch the movie where cabbage killed somebody and you said, this is it. This is it. Hear me, don't just laugh. I'm, I'm probing our convictions. It's time to ask questions. Not to be a rebel, but to ask questions. Everybody marries at 35. I mean, too, I grew up and I saw it like that. I, wouldn't you ask questions? I say, no problem, I'm 22. People served in church. They married at 37. You have not asked questions why they still serve and that happened. Could it be that your generation or your lineage is crying for a savior and saying lord will you not raise somebody and god says you come for koinonia there is something you must know that will equip you you need to stamp it at the devil somewhere oh the beauty of light all of a sudden you step home and you tell them i brought good news you see why the gospel is called good news what have we been giving people bad news all sorts of bad news. That means what we are preaching is not the gospel. Hallelujah. And you step home and you look at a lady who has not been married and you tell her, I'm not only going to pray for you, I will tell you what is wrong. It's not about you are a prophet. It's spiritual intelligence has made you prophetic. Hallelujah. Knowledge opens up the prophetic dimension in everyone. And so you look and you say, sister, there are certain truths you need to know. And when you know, you will walk out of this. And you begin to share those truths. And as you share, you will see the power of God. Last week, I think there was a gentleman that they brought. They had been, the one I announced, they had been on my case with that guy. I heard the guy was on a bike, minding his business. I don't know which corner he entered. One demon just fell on his head. The guy started speaking nonsense at once. No negotiation. It's amazing how the devil does not consult with us to try to afflict us. And this gentleman, the family members were confused and all of that. And I said, come for Koinonia. And after the meeting, I didn't even know because I kept announcing, you know, we we're about going and they, they brought the guy. I said, sit down there. When I saw him, I said, my friend, you are going to be delivered now. I was not asking him a question. I was not trying to say, do you have faith? Is your faith working? What size? Is it weak faith or strong faith? All I know is that that demon is living. Period. Period. When you truly have money to give somebody and he asks you for money, you will say, can your hand stretch well or small? Are you ready to take? Take. When you start giving excuses and say, hey, I'm expecting, you know, there's one, this is my uncle, the way this Nigeria is. All those long stories are they are trying to point to one thing. There's no money in your pocket. It's as simple as that. This is how it is spiritually. When we begin to give a lot of excuses and stories, it's a sign that we have not held on to something solid. Oh, that God will make you a savior. This is what this is all about. Brothers and sisters, that God will make you a savior. Forget about the challenges today. Are you getting my point? Don't feel bad. Forget about it. But you tell yourself, I have paid this price once and for all. I said something last week and let me say it again. There has been this new discovery that has been stopping a lot of weddings, right? SS. 
and AS. Are you aware of that? Lover boy, are you aware? Are you aware that this can jeopardize your destiny? That is not just enough to be in love. Are you aware of the implications, the questions you will be asked? I was told a very pathetic story of one guy who honestly had been seeing a sister. This guy had prayed. He was so convicted. He was so happy. And they went out on their first date. He was so happy. And then the lady told him, I think whether I'm SS or something, and said, this is the reality. And the guy said, whether he was AS or this. You see, it's a little issue. But now I have your attention. Because there are many of us that are probably asking this question, is this how my life will be? But there is a way out. If you don't believe there is a way out, we don't deserve to call God, God. There is a way out. Oh, there is a way out. We're tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. We're tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. Gotta be more. The scripture I just read says that we have been called into the fellowship of this mystery. That means the scrolls have been unlocked. Access has been given to us. Go and find out what it takes to reign. Listen, revelation is not knowing what God has said. Revelation is making it, knowing how to make it work in your life. That's revelation. It's not just what God has said. It's knowing how to make it work in your life. Knowing how to make it work in your life. imagine that with the revelation you have now after this meeting you will run run to a clinic where you know that somebody that you have been praying and trusting God for huh? who has been praying and say well this is God that brought this thing and you just tell him no I've discovered something new and I have come to prove it to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ arise from this hospital and all of a sudden Joshua Selman was not there. Your HOD was not there. But the God you serve was there. And you will watch that person get up. And your name is brother. So, 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 and so. And all of a sudden, you, you go back. See, there is a joy when the word works for you. Not that it is made to work for you. When you provoke it and you come with a testimony, you know that the word of God is alive. When you pray for someone, and the person says, do you know, I didn't even tell you the gravity of what I was suffering. It's like, look at the gentleman who was speaking. This is a growth. A growth is not something you lie about. For those of you who don't believe in miracles, how do you fake a growth? You can fake, like many of you think we men of God around do. You can fake that, okay, genotype changed. But do you fake a baby? How do you fake that a woman was barren and now is holding a baby? How do you fake that somebody could not walk and is now standing? There are mysteries. Everyone said there are mysteries. And I'm planting a hunger in every one of us to begin to explore the mysteries of the kingdom. Oh, there are mysteries. When it was time to judge the prophets of Baal. Elijah said, let us go to a mountain. He, he said, no, 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 no. There is a mystery we must invoke. Let's go to a mountain. And Baal said, I know what you are going. I know where you are going. I will meet you there. Other people were saying, why are they going? The ignorant ones always remain in the valley. Those who have knowledge climb the mountain. When they got there, he said, this is how we'll do it. You invoke Baal and I'll give you enough time. Brothers and sisters, they started calling on Baal. The Bible says they started cutting themselves. What did they understand about sacrifice and the presence of a God? They were cutting themselves to, to produce blood. They wanted blood to come out because they knew that blood is a language. It's a magnet in the spirit. 
they look at how they were walking a lot of spiritual laws and elijah was laughing he said i know what you are trying to do i'm sure Baal is sleeping if you were the one will you be laughing or you'll be praying i said lord let this thing not happen the same way it's happening I'm, I'm, don't disgrace me here on the strength of spiritual knowledge a man was laughing at the devil when it was time he said uh -uh, there is a protocol to spiritual things we don't do things foolishly let me have 12 altars ah the spirit of god said a man of intelligence somebody would have just said let me now show you oh god and you we do all kinds of things and the devil said this is it he said let me have 12 altars and when there were 12 altars he set up everything ah he said so that you don't think that we manufactured fire pour water the foolish people were pouring water they did not know that there is a mystery of the spirit the water and the blood the bible says when it comes to the earth these three entities can open any door he says there are three that bear witness in heaven the spirit the word and what the father the spirit and the word but he says when it comes to the earth there are three elements their coexistence will open any door he says the spirit the water and the blood and elijah said pour water they were foolishly pouring water when they finished he said oh god and see the fire that came the bible says the fire came and licked up everything elijah said chase them kill every single one of them when he killed them jezebel had it what law was operated what law who is this guy and suddenly she realized that Elijah was not a normal human being. And Elijah said, I'm done. I came to judge this she goddess called Jezebel because her prophets prospered and the prophets of God were in hiding. But one man was bold. Although there were many prophets, they couldn't come out. They were hiding. Elijah was taking fresh air. They came to disrupt him. He said, fire. Next, fire. The third people said, we, we are begging you. It's not like we are forcing you. We are begging you. We left our wives at home. We are begging you. Everybody say mysteries. Say mysteries. The occultic realm and witchcraft manipulate people through mysteries. Are you getting my point now? They use spells. They use enchantments. They don't need to see you. They make pronouncements. And when they make those pronouncements, when it comes, if there is darkness in you, it will prevail. Because they are called rulers of darkness. That means their, their dominion is activated when there is darkness. They are called rulers of darkness. But when they come and they see light, see, all this, I am uncursable, I am unkillable. You better understand the mysteries of the kingdom that activates those realities in your life. Because although you have been claiming and jumping, look at your life. It's already happening. I'm not scaring you. I'm telling you that there is more than what we have been taught. And brothers and sisters, if you do not open your eyes to see, you may not reign in life. There are many churches. There are many pastors struggling. I want crowd. I want this. I want that. And they do not know that there are mysteries in the kingdom. The Bible says, listen. It says, if I be lifted up. Have you read that scripture? Huh? MOG, let me give you a little clue. If I be lifted up. When a man of God keeps lifting himself, get ready for empty pews. He says, if I be lifted up, I will what? Draw all men unto myself. Not unto a man of God. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. When you keep drawing men to yourself, you will find out that there is very little you can give them. But when you draw men, when, when, when you reflect Christ, you stand as an ambassador, God himself. The Bible says, and God added daily to them as many as should be saved. Paul can plant 
Apollos can water but increases exclusively of God. Hallelujah. Tell me what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without you. Tell me what can I do? I can live without you. Listen, do you know that your family is under bondage because there is a mystery that has not been unlocked? Listen, listen, listen. There are mysteries are like spiritual codes of operations. I've shared it again during our series on mysteries of the kingdom. But I'll say it. Mysteries are like codes of operation. Look at me. If you have a drug, right? Just give me a viral cover or anything that I can use. If this is a drug, please look at me. Pharmacist. I'm not a pharmacist, so forgive me. Whether what I'm saying is right or wrong, let's just accept it. Are you getting my point now? In the making of this drug, certain things have been programmed this drug is like a machine is that true you don't look at it and say panadol don't by any means go to my leg i'm okay there the trouble is by this side of my head better find a way of positioning yourself and sub what is there no no you pick it up carry water close your eyes throw it in your mouth and take water and you smile you go back the panadol has been programmed to look for what is wrong because even you you don't know what is wrong you are you only know what you feel is wrong is that true so when you go to a doctor he looks at you and say doctor I, I don't know what is my eyes he says it's not eyes he said I'm, I'm the one going through it i'm telling you he says not your eyes just keep quiet take this take that and after two days you come and say ah, ah. doctor i've been i started giving myself medication for the past one week the eyes the pain has even increased say, who asked you it was not eye problem. It's the symptom of something else. Listen. Mysteries are like spiritual programmings. When they come into your territory, it's like an atomic bomb. They open up and they begin. Those codes start writing themselves upon your family. So there could be mysteries that invoke barrenness. Listen to me. There could be mysteries that invoke academic failure. There could be mysteries that invoke late marriage these mysteries ascend through whatever spiritual means dreams enchantments it says in six things shall he deliver you yes seven things he said you shall be delivered from the scourging tongues of men are you hearing what i'm saying now so this code lands like an alien and it begins to type out in your family that which it was programmed to do because mysteries work like the word of God. It's a mimicking. I told you that Satan was called what? Lucifer, the light bearer. He was the one who kept the revelations of the spirit. No word returns to the sender until it accomplishes what it was returned. If for any reason it returns to the sender, a higher word sent it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it says, so shall my word be. That proceeded forth from my mouth. It shall not return. Hallelujah. It's like an SS1 student. Who tells a junior student. Go and fetch water. And an SS3 student says. Go and sleep. Who will he obey? If the SS1 student says. I sent you. He said, mm -mm, No. Please. My school father said. I should go and sleep. I'm going to have my siesta. The SS1 student is now. He has joined two of them. Is that true? The integrity of the SS3 student and the SS1 student is what will be. And he say, I will punish you in front of this one to let you know I'm your senior. Or you kneel down. You go and fetch the water and give the junior student and he will use. That's a way of humiliating him to establish his seniority. Hallelujah. Mysteries. Everyone say mysteries. There are many well-meaning Christians. Hear me. Who are victims of the unlocking of mysteries someone comes and matches a charm brothers and sisters this person is returning maybe from church with your bible from choir practice 
Huh? You didn't see anything on, on the ground that shows that there is a charm, but you stepped on it. The charm has been programmed. He said, anybody's leg that steps on you is the person who said. And you step on it without light. And all of a sudden, you are minding your business and you see another law walking in your members. What is going on? Suddenly your leg, you can't tell again. Ha -ha. The last time I checked, my leg was fine. What is going on? You get up the next day times two, the size. Next day times three. And they go to the hospital and they say, Kai, there's nothing. Doctors now already know. They are tired of the devil. Thank God for what God is doing in hospitals. Many doctors now, when they look at your case, they say, look, I'm advising you. If you know a man of God that is anointed, find him quickly. Because where you are lying down here, three people came, same condition. Thank God for doctors that are spirit filled. Hallelujah. There are families like that. Brothers and sisters, I'm not the kind of person that sees demons in everything. There are principles. We're intelligent people. But I will deceive you if I tell you evil is not real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I would have, I would have jeopardized the integrity of my calling. This is why many of us go through all kinds of cycles of a lot of things. Brothers and sisters, hear me. When you find yourself in trouble, if you find yourself in a hole, you can't bring yourself out. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. That was the light that came to them. And then he said, arise and shine for your light. Not because you can sit down there forever. But he says, when your light comes, then you will arise. Tonight, someone's, how many minutes do we have? I'll minister for a few more minutes and then we'll, I'll take time and we'll minister to the sick. Is that, is that alright? I know that there are people who are trusting God for healing. This week. I'm not the kind of man of God that will say, now, after hearing this message, I hope that as you go back home, do something about it. No, no. Something must be done now. I'm not teaching you to start insulting people and just laugh and say this man is not powerful because we are all laboring to enter that rest in reality. Listen, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, hear me please, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ gives us access. Our operating these kingdom principles bring us, it is us taking advantage, hear me, when you walk in these principles, you are not trying to do something else outside of what Christ has done. It is your partnership with him. You're taking advantage of the access to make it real in your life. Are you getting my point now? Because that's where I understand that there can be confusion. A lot of us have believed that, okay, Jesus has done it. I believe it and I've said so. But I'm not seeing anything in my life. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, it says, If thou sh it shall come to pass in that day, thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day, that this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you. Listen, the Bible tells us again and again that we do not yet see all things under his feet. Please get this. Our walking the word of God is not trying to add to what Christ has done. Our walking the word of God is our response of obedience. Are you getting my point now? It is our proof of faith to make alive that truth. There are laws in the kingdom that were there before the fall of man. I hope you know. Job I want to come to have time, but let me show you something interesting. Let's go to the book of Job. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 
Job 38 Behold I show you a mystery This that I'm about to read Happened way Hear me It happened way Before Genesis 1 Job 38 Okay Job, through whatever spiritual mystery I really do not know, but he invoked the presence of God. Then the Lord answered Job out of what? A whirlwind. You see that it was the same whirlwind with the chariots of fire that came and carried Elijah. And said, verse 2, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Who is this that is talking? Job, you are making a lot of noise. I've been listening to you from heaven. You've been saying so many things. You are ranting. Job, I want to speak to you now. Verse 3. Guard up your loins like a man, for I will demand of thee. I want to talk to you using my knowledge as God. And I want you to answer me if you think you have knowledge of that much mystery. Verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the what? That's question 1. So God tells us the earth has foundation. Geography tells us is revolving in space. God said, uh-uh. There is a spiritual mystery. A day, this earth is like a building. What kind of eyes will you see that will turn a God shape into a building? Declare if thou hast understanding. Verse 5. Who laid the measures? That means there was an architect. It was an intentional thing. The earth was measured. It has dimensions. Or who had stretched the line. Like the plumb line you use upon it. Verse 6. Whereupon are the foundations fastened? Like a tent. Or who laid the cornerstone? Verse 7. This God is telling Job. That were you dear. When the morning stars sang together, the day the earth foundation was laid, there was a thanksgiving and foundation laying ceremony. Way before your arrival, this is what happened in the heavens. The morning stars sang together and all the what? I've said, I've said it again and again. Sons of God is not a New Testament concept. It has been there since. Sons of God is not a name. It's an office. Who shut the sea with doors? Brothers and sisters, that means the seas you see, they have spiritual doors. So when we see flooding, we know that a law was activated that opened those doors in the spirit. This is what God is telling us. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as just flooding anyhow. There are people by acts of divination, they have inquired in the archives of spiritual things. When it break forth, as if it issued out of the womb. Verse 9. When I made the cloud a garment and thick darkness a swaddling blood for it. Verse 10. And break up for my decreed place and set bars and doors. God made a decree and says, Sis, make sure you remain here. And said, Either to shall thou come, but no further. And here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Let's stop there. I just wanted to show you when did this happen and what, when this thing happened, Job kept quiet. Job said, wow. Wow. You see why the people worship God? Because heaven is a place of perpetual revelation. God surrounds himself with mysteries. So, the mystery you saw before you bow down, when you stand up, is not what you will see again. It's like these lights. The way these lights change, that's how the mysteries around God, there are so many, they keep changing. And so in the book of Ezekiel, we see men saying holy. In Revelation, they are still saying holy. They've not stopped. 
they are saying holy is not that that's their work they pay them salary for it no it is a response they are not even aware that that long a time had come and gone brothers and sisters hear me there are mysteries in this kingdom say it there are mysteries in many parts of this nation every time they kill men the people in those territories become richer what do they know about blood and money a man of god wrote a powerful book blood money let me tell you the truth every money is blood money every whether blood of jesus or blood of whatever every money is blood money are you learning something i'm not just teaching you this so that you will have theological knowledge and say wow i have something but it is to sponsor your hunger for spiritual things. So that when men look at you and say, Ah, ah Pastor Femi, you are already healing the sick. What are you looking for? You say, what am I looking for? Paul said that I may know him. When Paul, at the apex of his ministry, saw that there was so little he knew, he said that I may know him. That I may know him. In five minutes, I will show you something that the fasting tonight has done for you because it's a mystery. Fasting is a mystery in the spirit that has not been taught because of the effect it has. We have not been taught that it is part of our spiritual growth process. I want to see you. Isaiah 58. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you more. Isaiah 58. I want to know you more. Silaba Kuradu Shilabariana. I want to know you. I want to know. Verse 6. Verse 6. Isaiah 58, verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? That means not every fast carries weight in the spirit. There are some fastings that are religiosities that have no power back in them and it's just dead religion. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it says there is a kind of fast that God has chosen. Is this not the kind of fast that I have chosen? It said to lose the what? To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to do what? To let the oppressed. The word let there is to permit them. That they will go free. And that you break what? To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. So it is in this kind of fast that you lose the bands of wickedness. In your fasting, you activate a law that strengthens your faith, kills unbelief. I truly believe. That fasting primarily addresses one major issue, and that's unbelief. It opens you up, your organs of interaction with the spirit. All of a sudden, all the possibilities in God are the possibilities in you. There is a relationship between food, your body, and this realm. That's why gluttony is a sin. Gluttony is not fornication. So why, why is it a sin? Lost for food. The same way a man has lost for a woman. 
Someone has lost, but his owner is not a woman, it's for food. Even if he has eaten, he can hold the bread and lie down and sleep like that. That is gluttony. That's the kind of case that requires deliverance. Fast. Hallelujah. Because, see, excessive food does something to your spirit man. It's like a meter. There is a level to which your eating becomes healthy. It keeps your body. Afterwards, it's like the law of diminishing returns. It's like, it's like you are inverting your spirit. Are you seeing that now? Because you see, your, your spiritual growth is inversely proportional to your flesh. Two of them cannot grow at the same time. Huh? So, when one is growing, the other one must bow. And part of that is achieved in fasting. When you fast and you pray and you declare the word with understanding and spiritual intelligence, you edify yourself, you activate certain things. To lose the bands, that means wickedness has a rope. Hello? It has a rope tying down families. Many of us are, are victims of the bands of wickedness. Like the hands of Samson. A great warrior but tied down. And nothing could be done about it. He said to undo what? Heavy burdens. A luggage that you inherited. You, they gave birth to you in the middle of a spiritual discussion that has nothing to do with you. And like Simon of Cyrene, you just received a luggage on your head you cannot explain. It says, to let the oppressed go free. Listen, there are, there are different kinds of captivity, but there are certain people, the Bible calls them lawful captives. Captives who are in captivity legally. It says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you. I don't know if you need peace in your life, but it's not just going to come by crossing your legs. You must engage spiritual keys. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatsoever you bind, whatsoever you cast. Keys of access. Verse 8. Let's read together. Then shall what? So fasting is a mystery that accelerates revelation. He said, then shall your light break forth. There is something God has been trying to reveal to you. There is a spiritual understanding that steps up your stand in the spirit. But it's been limited. The weight of food and the weight of, of laziness. This inertia that comes with this body. And when you fast, you ease yourself. The Bible says your light breaks forth as the morning. And your health shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. And then the glory of the Lord shall be your what? Reward. It shall be your reward. You will see greater glory upon your life. Greater glory. Physically, in ministry, in life. You begin, that's, see, that's why some people go from strength to strength. When you think they have exhausted everything, they come up with a new dimension. Let me show you one last mystery. What's the time now? Isaiah 40. Let's just look at that finally. We hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land, all we want is you. Verse 28, please let's hurry up. Isaiah 40 from verse 28. 
I want to teach you a very powerful principle. For those of you who have not listened to the teaching, Secret of Sustained Glory, please get it. There's nothing as painful as looking at a man and saying he once was powerful. He once was anointed. This guy used to have a flourishing ministry. God was alive in his midst. No, it should not be that. May you never have the testimony of Ichabod in your life that the glory has departed. No. Has thou not known when God begins to probe a man like this, then he wants to reveal something he has not known. Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does what? Number one, he does not have this characteristic in himself. That means he does not have the ability to faint. There is a mystery encapsulated in his person that cannot permit this deficiency. He says, neither is he weary. There's nothing called tiredness. Because it is hope deferred that makes the heart weary. His word is yea and amen. There is no postponing, so he does not know weariness. He says, and there is no searching of his understanding. So he gives us certain things. Number one, mankind can faint. The word faint is to be fatigued, to be tired. We can be weary when what you hope for does not come. When the marriage does not come as when you want it. Are you hearing me? When the admission or the graduation, it is natural. Hear me. It is not a spiritual deficiency as it were. It's part of the predicament that comes with wearing this body. But there is a technology in the spirit and this is what i want to teach you it says he giveth what that means there is a supply in the spirit that can bring power to you when you faint and to those who have no might he can increase like a meter he can increase strength hallelujah next verse even what I hope you know the Bible says the glory of the young people is their strength. So when the strong ones grow weary, it's a sign that we are limited. The youth shall faint. That means in your Christian experience, listen to me, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how blessed you are, a time can come in your life on the strength of the physical happenings in your life. This possibility can be true of you that you can faint hallelujah you trusted god for a great cgpa you saw five points in your dream when you went to check it you saw 1.7 say lord which what is this again i've already packaged my thanksgiving offering i thought it was five points what is who is confusing me here and then you may be a man of god but at this time it will touch you are you hearing me when you hear that your loved one that you have been praying for finally died, the Bible says, even the youths shall faint. And be wary, and young men shall utterly fall. That's why you hear certain people just sit down and you hear them talk. And you're like, sister, are you not born again? She says, see, if God doesn't help me, we lie. Whoever comes, I don't care who, I will shall marry and we'll flog it out when we get married. It's not like the person is not a Christian. This is what is happening. Are you getting my point? Don't criticize people when you see them fainting. And Jesus wept. He wept because he took this body. And it grieved him. Jesus was hungry. And he was staggering. And when he came to a fig tree, he wanted to plug it. And there was no food. And he was angry. He caused the fig tree. Because when you wear this body, you can faint. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Physical fatigue, emotional fatigue when your hope is postponed. You are trusting God for the job and someone said, um, you'll hear from me maybe in two weeks time. And you've waited for nine years, no job. Everybody keeps seeing you and say, ah, you should be a, a director now, be, and you're even embarrassed. Yes, I'm a director by faith. Please don't, don't embarrass me here. Must you laugh at me? 
That's the kind of testimony that some of us have. But let me tell you something. This is the technology. Hiya. When you get to this state in the spirit, when it looks like you are about to go down, it says, but they, that means not everybody is interested, but they that wait upon the Lord. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. If you're a man of God here, let me teach you a secret. Otherwise, one day you will sit before your congregation and start crying. I don't know how many messages I preach in a week. I travel all the time. I'm on, I'm on the road. And there are all kinds of expectations. Every territory that invites me, they are happy. They listen to the messages. They go and invite people. And there is, you see, the anointing is like, the anointing is, is as if you have holes in your body. Are you getting me? You become a conductor of the anointing and it tells on your body. That's why when you leave your body and you come back, you feel weak. Right? So, virtue, that concept of virtue going out is real. Many people have not felt it because they are not anointed. They feel the same way from the beginning of the service. They didn't bless anybody, nothing left. But when they touched Jesus, he felt something. He said, who touched me? Ah, it created an effect. Because there are times you are standing on stage and you will receive the pain of somebody. For that small moment, you will feel that pain and your body will respond. Where is this one coming from? The Holy Ghost said, no, no, no. This is a word of knowledge. But your body is still going to suffer that predicament. So by the time the service is done, a lot has left you. You've preached all of the messages and then another message is coming and the people say, man of God, we saw in a vision you were doing great things and you are saying, oh God. One day, you will just fall down and just die. Because you will preach every message. You will now check and say, now which one? Faith, they had it last year. Uh, <laughs> see, those who are pastors are laughing. Because they know what happens every Saturday. Saturdays are the most stressful days for men of God. And uh, uh, they are meeting this because they are there sweating. They are wondering. You go to someone.com, nothing. The heavens are closed. You go to all kinds of things. You try to listen to a man of God's message. You remember that, ah, you shared that thing already and you are, you are now wondering, I say, oh Lord. Don't let that become part of your life. There is a technology. They that wait. It's a system. It's a mystery. It is a they, they that shout and do stupid things around the presence of God. They that, what do you understand? A waiter, huh? when you go to a very correct restaurant, what a waiter does is that he just stands waiting for your order. Right? They that come into his presence and say, Lord, if you don't help me, there is no help. And phone calls are ringing, man of God, we are calling to remind you that God is going to use you. You keep those things and say, Lord, this is why I'm here. I'm here because of these phone calls. There's so much demand upon me. If you don't increase my capacity and help me. You know that song? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up. The first thing that happens to those who wait upon the Lord is that they shall renew. It's like the charging of a battery. All of a sudden in his presence, God begins to, he fires one revelation that becomes your three-month sermon. One revelation. Hi! I'm, I, it is my testimony in his presence, all of a sudden you think every message, you've exhausted everything, and then God gives you an encounter, 
and you start writing and you are sometimes i i wish i can just organize koinonia every day to just unlock that which is in my spirit so your strength let's try that our song again we will run and not be weary i don't know all the stanzas da, 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 da. whatever it is and his joy will be our strength will come into his presence many of you didn't go to bible school we will wait upon the lord in his presence his fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait Some of you, when they were teaching that song in Sunday school, you were running and scratching people's car and, and stealing money and buying ice cream. When your colleagues were receiving, you were there. They drop you. Immediately they leave. You now run away. <laughs> Hallelujah. So number one, they shall renew their strength. Physical strength. Spiritual strength. When you see a man five years in ministry, looking as if he has been in ministry for... 50 years uh, well you see where everything is i just write whether it's there i can't even remember and it's, what laziness inertia it says they shall renew their strength number two they shall mount up mm. many of us i don't want to go into the story of the eagle but you know that there are times that the eagle needs to defeather itself, shed off the old for the new because you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. You cannot tie a new material with an old one. Their strength is not the same. Hallelujah. And so what happens is that in that place of retreat is the shedding off of that level. There is something that leaves you. The weaknesses. God wants to increase the ministry. He needs to increase your faith. He needs to increase your trust. He needs to increase integrity. Many things happen in that secret place. And then you will mount up. All of a sudden, you come up on stage. And whoa, there is a brand new you. When someone is listening to the message and is busy hitting his head, then he hears another dimension. This is an unending mystery. They shall run. Like Elijah. Elijah told Ahab, saddle your ass and run. Don't worry about me. There is a technology in the spirit that accelerates my life. Don't worry. You see, because when you are staying back in the secret place, it looks like you're a fool. Sometimes you will need to refuse a, a ministration that can honor you greatly. Is it not? You are about to go for a ministration where you know that the honorarium will make you happy. And God says, stay back. There's no true happiness outside of my presence. Stay back and say, Lord, the last time somebody smiled and wanted to give me a car, God said, remain there. But when you remain there, you will run. See, I'm teaching you a powerful secret. That's why when you look, you'll be wondering, is there anything to ENI there? Is there anything to Koinonia? Hold on. When we wait, we will run. Is it not a mystery in the spirit? When you want to run, wait. He said, when you wait, then truly you will run. Hurry, hurry in life. I want to hurry to do ministry. I want to hurry to be man of God. Bible says, wait. That's how you run. When you wait, then you will run. Jesus Christ was waiting and praying and interacting with the Father. They took the boat and they started going. Six hours they were ahead of him. But they were not making any progress. That's how many people are doing ministry. They are doing ministry as if they call themselves. No proof, no sign, no witness. God doesn't confirm anything. They struggle to confirm everything. I know, come on. There must be a supernatural dimension to your life. There must be a dimension men cannot explain. That's the proof that you are not alone. 
if you can explain everything about your ministry, you are doing it alone. There must be a supernatural dimension. They shall run and not be. So all of a sudden, Jesus Christ stands up and starts walking on the water. This is Jesus walking on the water. Strength came upon him. And the disciples, he was about passing them. He said, Master, eh? Master, you can't pass us like this. You are seeing what we are going through. Jesus looked at them. They thought he was a ghost. And Peter said, I like this, your technology. So there is something like this and you left us struggling with the boat when we can walk. Brothers and sisters, drop moving in the boat and wait so that you can receive the feet to run. Are you getting me? Many of us are so slow in our life. We are trying to hurry up and we are living the presence of God. And we believe that by living the presence of God, you will hurry up in life. You are joking. That's why a man can start a ministry. After 12 years, the man is alone as if God didn't send him. And they say, anybody you see moving like that, forget it. Uh, something must have been done. Is that true? Learn this. If you don't learn anything, if you want to run in the spirit, wait. I want to hurry up and marry. Don't say, let's walk around. Is it not when they see us? Wait. Ah, you, you, think we, you think we don't know what you people discuss? Look, let me tell you. It's good to let people see you. Huh? But where was Ruth when God was fixing her destiny? Naomi was busy talking to her. She was waiting. When you find yourself running without a track record of waiting, one gentleman sent me a text and he said, man of God, I feel the call. How do I launch out? I replied to him, I said, forget about launching out. Settle down. You see, that's the language. Launch out. In other words, how do I take this thing? The fire that is burning my spirit nobody knows the fire of god if not understood you can misinterpret that fire to mean that it's a sign to run whereas it's a sign to refine you and not be wary he said and they shall walk and the bible tells us in isaiah 43 that when you are walking it means there's fire around you when you walk through the fire so when you are walking through what is killing others you are standing tall. And people are saying, what technologies? Uh -uh. I waited until the fourth man arrived. So I'm not alone. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Come live in me. All my life. Take over, come breathe in me, and I will rise on eagle. Two prayer points very quickly. Two prayer points. Hallelujah. Um, there's a family that that got to contact me. I don't know if they are here. That they, is it a sick person or a, a mad person or someone like that? Are they around? Please protocol find out if they are around. Then we'll just minister fast. If they are not around, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Two prayer points. Prayer point number one. Jeremiah 33 verse three says, "Call on to me." And I will answer. It says, I will show you. I will not just tell you. I will show you. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set myself upon the tower to see what the Lord will say. You're going to say, oh God, let the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm tired of ignorance. I'm tired of living my life anyhow. Open up the scrolls of the spirit and grant me access to revelation. Lift your voice and pray.
inside and outside we are praying now shake it take it baba 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 make a prateka la baba 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 we are praying now leke te porakata balada bas mande ke prince ke la boko shoto la baba 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 shekata balako soto balada baba it has been given unto you jesus christ paid the price already it has been given unto you to know the mysteries the spiritual codes that govern dominion pray for the sake of your family for the sake of many that you have been anointed to save there are destinies tied to your life don't let them die pray there is a mystery that you will know that will stop these spells these yokes of darkness from your life open our eyes oh God open our eyes pray grant me light I hate fear. I cause fear. Reveal something to me that takes fear out of my life. Reveal something to me that takes insecurity out of my life. Reveal something to me that stops competition in my life. Let me stand on a solid rock. Koinonia pray. Zeketa ba 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 ba. Rakata pratekate. Zagata pondo kotolo bodosh. Zagata brata katela katebosh. Sopros kete balaba. Open our eyes to the mysteries of the kingdom. Open our eyes to the operations of spiritual laws. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. You're going to pray whether you fasted or not. You're all in the corporate atmosphere. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every band of wickedness over my life, please hear me, over my family, over my loved ones, I stand tonight as an ambassador and I declare that enough is enough. Those bands be broken now. Lift your voice and pray. Come on, lose those bonds over my family. I declare, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I confront witchcraft, the system of evil, the system of death. I challenge you as an ambassador. Thus far have you come, no further shall you go. Pray, pray. Your prayer will prevail. Your prayer will prevail. We confront delay. We confront delay. We confront poverty. We confront late marriage. We confront barrenness. We confront terminal diseases. Confront witchcraft, spells, yokes, enchantments, divinations that are carried out in heavenly places. Manda katabosa, rekete bosh, stargazing, ne 
necromancy we challenge those powers we challenge them we come as ambassadors sons of light sons of grace sons of power shake it up, 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 up. Oh, we challenge them. We challenge them. We challenge covens. We challenge spells. We will not be silent. The King of Glory steps into our families. The King of Glory steps into your academics. Enough is enough. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. I tear down the curtains of wickedness. I tear down the bands of evil. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge failure. Challenge delay. Pray. Something is happening in the spirit. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your job. We tear down spiritual walls, limitations. Be broken. Yokes. Be broken. The spirit of the Lord God is upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give me five minutes Hallelujah. and God is going to do something right in this place. The devil must let you go. Shake it up, 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 up. Oh, he must let you go. Victory is imminent. Man must know that your God is alive. a few minutes and we're done something must break open in your life tonight hallelujah listen 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 the bible says resist the devil and he will flee hallelujah he must flee
must flee. I tell you, our families must testify that Jesus is alive. And we are tearing down limitations. Lift your hands. There are families that have been limited in many ways. We are going to shout that name Jesus once. I saw this many times as I prayed today. As you shout that name, the sword from heaven will descend upon certain people and there will be a tearing apart. I tell you, a tearing apart. I already sense the anointing of the spirit. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, every family represented here, inside and outside, that have been facing any kind of limitation, I judge that power and I declare that as they shout this name, let it rattle the foundations of witchcraft and sorcery in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you ready now? Man, take up a rataba. One, two, my God, three. Koprotoshkeba, seketete. I cross those altars. I cross those altars. I cross those altars. Those altars inside, outside. I cost them. I cost them. I set them on fire. Make go portos. Make it take a bar. I come with an apostolic rod. In the name of Jesus, I invoke the powers of heaven to fight this spirit. I invoke the powers of heaven. I take a lambatesh. I release you. I release you. I release you. I release you. I release your family. I release your family. Now, I release your family from witchcraft. I release you from delay. I release you from limitation. I release you. Lift your hands again. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I see at least 12 families. Hear me. The Lord is bringing restoration. Hear me. Restoration. As I begin to speak, God will locate those families. Exact families. Right now, Lord, let your power man to kapa teketa rekete kabashka those families for restoration in the name of Jesus. Let the angel of restoration move inside and outside. Let the angel of restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Sevenfold, sevenfold, sevenfold. I decree it. I declare it sevenfold hallelujah hallelujah the Lord wants to break academic bondage lift your hands this suffering is over lift your hands hear me you're going to shout that name Jesus again when you shout it there are many of us I'm seeing chains this is how it will leave you in a shocking way are you ready now father everyone here under any spell and bondage of academics in the mighty name of Jesus we bring that situation under judgment one two three go 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 Go, 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 go. I judge that power. I judge that power. I judge that power. Mandega de Bacata Prondo Cotobala Sita. Shagratica Lebosha. Hallelujah. We'll soon be rounding up. 
I see a lot of packages that are supposed to have come upon many people. Listen to me. But I see them hanging in the spirit. So many. For many of us, you have seen it in visions. You know it has been released. Man, Tata, as I speak now, as I speak, as I speak now, as I speak now, there is a release. It's, it's coming on people. Right now, right now, right now. I open the heavens. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come now. No matter how long it has stayed in the spirit, I command it. I command it. I command it. I command it. No matter how long, if I be a servant of God, I invoke it. Let it come now. Let it come now. Let it come now. If I be an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I invoke it. Let it come now. Let it come now. to lift his body and it does not take too long but the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place sharpen yourself become exceptional the bible says and john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance when john appeared with uncanny accuracy he knew that this was jesus he said behold the lamb behold the lamb he didn't mistake in jesus for john the beloved he didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something you buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed 
at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. No more I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional. To deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed. And have been graced. I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself and then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming and I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. 
he became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they will know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Jos. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20 downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace. He will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave. You become a city that is set on a hill. That cannot. Cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available then that unction will come upon you it comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of god upon your life are you getting what i'm saying it's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit he becomes undeniable invincible no matter what you say about that person the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part and tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you like Saul you will go back and they will say ah uh, is Saul also one of the prophets when did you enter this dimension favor is when preparation meets opportunity it's not magical it's a formula and God is calling us wipe the tears of your family Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. That something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service. I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent. By March calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace. Willing to pay any amount. Job or no job. There are people who are not working. But they are getting the salary of CEOs. Because people will pay for your gift. 
Let me tell you. It says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Master whatever he has given you. And tonight an anointing comes on it. And I send you like the foxes of Samson. And you will step in and begin to do wonders. The pride of every true leader. It's not that he becomes a superstar. I've said it again and again. That true leadership, the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders, not maintain followers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten, but I will be called Pula. Pula, the land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business, mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray as a worker. I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional, 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 exceptional. I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven and I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happened to them all opportunity and seasons come to them all hallelujah hallelujah rise up on your feet let's pray this prayer point you're going to ask god for grace mention the areas where you need god to grant you grace to be competent there are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. 
Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says, For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials, sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist that something must change. It doesn't take time. It just takes one encounter. You came with a lot of challenges. Don't sit down and waste your time. Make sure you cry unto God. Tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight. Go ahead. Please speak to the Lord, especially for those standing outside. Make sure you talk to him.
I see the rain of your love. I feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain, let it rain. Open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't care what the issue is. Let your faith rise right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see sick people all around, inside and outside, and I see all kinds of people. But I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. your hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake it to those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. Shake it to the devil. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing 
in the name of Jesus Satan let God's people go there's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere there is no hiding place not for witchcraft there is no hiding place I command judgment let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains hallelujah I see a lot of chains lift your hands again I see chains so many chains break chains break break chains break listen some of you these chains has lasted for years and decades i don't care how long it has been as you shout that name again i see many people outside you will know the chain has broken that embargo over your family you will know it when it happens because i hear sounds of change at the count of three shout that name again with all your might and i command that as they shout may those chains break one two three chains of stagnation chains. Break it, from every chain, I break free chains of sickness, chains of poverty, chains, chains of stagnation. <laughs> I break free. I listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus. Now over families. Any family. Under the sound of my voice. You have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am. And I command. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Shake it, take 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 we invoke better the blood that speaks better things. Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? 
Zechariah 1 18 it says four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Israel and against Jerusalem so that no man will lift up his head he said but I have sent four carpenters and they will terrorize those horns we have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness they must let you go after nine plagues Pharaoh refused to let them go he said yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt and after that he will let you go Jesus paid the price in full completely there is no reason why the devil should tie you down when he was on the cross he said it is finished and we are here to enforce that which that fatigued in the name of Jesus for those in front here they represent families I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities at the count of three you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have I don't care what covenant you have in the name of Jesus therefore I speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of Jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood I cost you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now I compel you by the blood of Jesus that blood opens the gates of captivity that blood opens that gate in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I declare every family under bondage free I don't care how long the doors have been closed we open it now you will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs yeah. hallelujah who is stephanie stephanie i hear a name stephanie you are wearing a like orange veil do we have somebody like that is it an orange veil or something stephanie yeah. bring that woman that lady or that woman whoever just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish fast. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know. If there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. 
and it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? Because the Lord is going to lift you. Why am I seeing a ring in your hand? I'm not seeing a physical ring. But it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring. Your wedding bells are ringing. Are you married? Huh? This is what I'm... <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed. We are a family. Marriage is not a bad thing. Abi mommy, is it a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. Because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen, my dear. You don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, it will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What, does, what, what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman. She sees and people have been saying she's fake. I'm saying, if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you, except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight, but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken Hold hands, both of you. Mm. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You are a great lady but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is, there is. Newi. I know it's an Igbo place, right? There is. 
there is a there is somebody at, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newe. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. You don't know. Yes. You love God. Asleep. Yes. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God. Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's let's not Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. Two years now. What, 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 I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry. It's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give Jesus. Oh, praise God. Pray to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? <laughs> they just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that. Truly, truly. The grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Yes. And I have since graduate. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when 
the refinery to Shika here. He said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cut the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs. Right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. It brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way, bringing breakthroughs to you, refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy. Look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? So when I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made let me yours. Please bring out. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise, the fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus, that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, 
find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you. The price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request. Ushers, let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side. Please help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that. Please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online. It's time for them to connect now. So that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter. And brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long. Let's do it very quickly. I have seen... God do strange things strange things in the lives of people we have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles please I want you to know the person you are praying to I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman 
is not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Shaka prato soto bala la bala la bala la bala. Hey, se mara na na mosuri na 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 mas. Shapra pakata bala la bala. Rakata prato sopre kere bala la bala. Hey, mara na 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 mos. Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh come. Every cry, every need, Lord, every pain. Lord, let things that look impossible by men. We pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, we ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God Kabbalataya. He said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. 
Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level, by the weapon of the prophetic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down. May they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down. May they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear I cause fear, I cause fear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. Mysterious prophetic encounters. May your exact assignment be revealed. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people praying right now. All you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level. You just came to get direction. I prophesy to you. The Bible says, and ye shall hear a voice from behind. Saying, this is the way. I command 
between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you hallelujah I pray for your finances in the name of Jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that beginning from next month I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you yeah. hallelujah favor Dadala, the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now 
in the name of Jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life I bring that confusion to an end now I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb Mazuka parata teleka. In fact, I pray for you. Listen, not just physical barrenness, any area of your life. This is the year of the rain. And when rain falls, barrenness stops. Therefore, I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. In the name of Jesus, I command everything called dead in your life and your family. I don't care for how long it has died. Your health, your business, your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command resurrection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. There are people who desire God. You desire an encounter. That's what you need. You desire an encounter. I pray for you. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. You may not understand what I'm saying. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are you that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability I put an anointing on your gift, on your work, on your skill. May it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I just want to do an impartation. There are people who have come from different places. Please be sensitive. We are out of time. We will soon round up. But it's time to receive something. Listen. Listen, I told you there will be many impartations. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter what you are doing, when the grace is not there, you will struggle forever. Please hear me. Especially in ministry. If you are a minister of the gospel in this place. Help her please. It's time for you to catch this thing for real. It's yours for the taking. Listen. I want to pray. As I stretch my hands and pray. Inside and outside wherever you are. You must not be in ministry like fivefold. Whatever area. Many of you will begin to have dreams. Encounters. Listen. Many of you will step into healing graces. There's no time to move one by one. But I'm going, it's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge 
gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance Zamatikalai Lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that, that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of Jesus I release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of Jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and I declare these hands that are lifted like Aaron like Joshua lifted up the hands of his servant Moses I command may those hands never go down may the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and I pray for marriages supernaturally may God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are I prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the Lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it Jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coming on here as they come God bless you keep coming God bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old God bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny Jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously 
totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to Jesus hallelujah I salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem I want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I believe you died for me you rose again for me I surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin I denounce Satan and I receive eternal life into my spirit keep your hands lifted father receive these ones change them transform their lives radically I cause the power of sin from your life and I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you in the name of the Lord Jesus everything that keeps drawing you to sin I cause it right now in the name of Jesus God bless you thank you for this great decision Please follow the ushers, the gentlemen with the jerseys. They will have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.